setters and senders. Happy to have you back at Vertical South. Hey. John and Nick on the same side of the camera today. Uh, we're having a conversation on a topic about grading problems. Personally at our gym and the way that we set, we use this system called the RIC system. This was something given to me basically by the person who taught me to set. And then uh, we went and amended it and kind of made it work for ourselves. Now what the RIC system is as a whole, it's basically just a way to gauge a problem and how difficult it is versus three components, risk, intensity, and complexity. And then what did you add to it, John? I added an O. Uh, for originality, like what is the novelty of the problem, to make the whole thing say Rico. Rico's Roughnecks! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you need to remember, you can think of Starship Troopers. Um, but short of that, we're gonna jump into each one of these aspects and how they allow us to understand a problem's difficulty and allow us to set in a specific range of difficulty. Oh, you're a mate. <clears throat> So the first in RICO is risk. Now what is risk? That's a good question, Nick. Very good question. It's not so much like how dangerous the move is. That's what you would think risk would be right off the bat, just going off the word what risk. It's, but in the climbing realm, it's um, what's the probability of dropping the move, like how hard is it to obtain that move to keep on moving until the finish hold, so to speak. If you went to our V4 video, the it's the white crimps that go up onto kind of an overhang and you're, you have to lie back up off the ground uh, and drive off of a right foot on, and you're mashed on a small hole. That I would say is a very risky move because then you're bumping out to a, a another crimp. So the percentage, like if you looked at it in percentages, you have a, ah, no, nah, that's probably not the best way to explain it. Well, it's kind of interesting, no, because on, on that problem, that's the highest percentage drop move. When I sit back at the desk and I watch people climb that problem, a lot of people will get to that position, but they won't go to the next move because in their head, they're assigning that risk and saying, oh, I'm gonna fail, oh, I'm gonna miss this move, even though they probably have the strength to do it, and it's really not any harder than any of the rest of the moves, it's just more risky because I'm leaving a mash crimp to go out to a further crimp as well, and in your head, you kind of quantify that as a risk, you know? And I would also say, so that is exactly what I was trying to say, but could not. <laughs> fumbling, fumbling through in the English language, always difficult, <clears throat> um, especially early in the morning without enough coffee. But another thing uh, added to the risk component, <clears throat> I said, like, uh, talking about that before again, I said those moves were kind of high up, so the exposure element, um, which then can bring in, like, especially when you're outdo outdoors, exposure is danger. That's risky, so it's the literal term of risk. It is risky. But in a gym, it's, you know, we're training, you have the mats below you, we're climbing safe. So the exposure is adds to that element of risk. Uh, how exposed are you? Like, you know, you know, lying back, you know, what feels like 15 feet off the ground, but it's only like, you know, like seven feet feels very risky and then you're getting your head and then when you're going out to the next move as John said you increase your the percentage of you not hitting it or not going to that move with control is higher so that is a higher risk move and when we're talking about <clears throat> the Rico system in terms of grading you could have a climb that is not necessarily strength wise a V5 or a six, or a four, or a three, or a two, but the risk element of it is that, which would then give it that grade. And you might see this a lot in competition climbing, um, yeah. where there's these big compressive moves where they have to jump in, and these climbers can definitely do the move, but can they stick that move every attempt for four minutes straight while they try and send? That's part of the risk. The move is not super duper necessarily difficult but like if you don't place your hand just perfect on this sloper you're going to slip off and the move is dropped and that adds a whole element to the to 
that's the first element to grading a problem for us. Did you also say like those comp moves where it's like the running starts like da, 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 Yeah, for sure, yeah. Like uh, coordinate, uh, when I say compressive, I meant to say coordination, coordination moves. Yeah. Um, compressive moves also make sense. But yeah, like a coordination move, if you fumble your footwork just jogging up to the problem or how, however it is, or your foot slips off the volume right at the beginning, you're gonna take a fall right there. Not because the move is difficult, but just because you missed. Um, and really the move is, fairly simple. We have a good example of that on the wall um, right now, uh, with kind of a run and jump. But that does it for risk. I mean, it just generally assigns um, a difficulty based on what is the percentage of like droppable moves in the problem. Sometimes you'll see the crusher flail on a, on a V3 because they miss the move. They miss the undercling or maybe they didn't even see a hold. And um, they'll take a fall on a V3 on something they should flash. You'll see them kind of chuckle and walk away like, ah, oh, dang, you know, I just didn't assign enough focus to the problem to be able to, to be able to hit it. So that's risk. Rico's Roughnecks. Rico's Roughnecks. Um, <laughs> moving on to intensity. We kind of assign intensity as the amount of focus, poise, strength, tension, and all the physical attributes of the problem, right? This is actually like the sheer physical difficulty of the problem and how many moves in that boulder or in that route are at that intensity level. Sometimes you'll have a problem that's mellow on the beginning, you hit the crux and then it's mellow at the end. That's not a super intense problem, it's got a, maybe a very intense move on the, in the middle, but the entire generalness of the problem is not that intense. Conversely, on some problems, we'll have every move hit some amount of intensity. We've got a V6 that starts with a run and jump. So you run and jump into a sloper, you turn, dyno out to a hold, you have to swing, hit a right hand, then throw a toe hook, pedal into the net, like flip around, pedal into the moves, here, here, and then out around a lip. And only then does it lighten up into a small ladder on the other side of the overhang. And that is a very intense problem doesn't necessarily make it harder than any other six it just means that the physicality is going to come much higher into play and the focus required is going to come a little bit higher up whereas there might be a very flat vertical v6 or v7 that's just small crimps very standard climbing we're just moving up left and right almost like a ladder maybe there's a cross or two but the the focus of that is on the hands and not really the physical intensity other than just the hand strength so intensity is something you should really bring into your, into your grading if you don't already, or at least that's what we'd suggest, is that intensity is a big portion of it, right? I think this is probably one of the easiest attributes for people to understand because it, it's just the general physicality, right? Yeah, yeah. I'd say overall. I like, you have a word in our notes, uh, poise. Poise, yeah. I like the use of that word. So that's something that every, I think that uh, really delineates people who are climbing you know, from the intermediate level to like intermediate advance is, you might find people who are crushing fours and, and starting to crush fives, but they don't necessarily do it with poise. You see this all the time, people are missing footwork and they're scraping down the wall, they find the foot, they dyno out to the move, their feet kick and they flail and one of their fingers pops off and then they match over top of their hands all funny, and then they get to the top and everyone cheers for them because it was an epic saga of watching this person send. However, what really delineates your ability to move on past those grades is being able to go back to the threes and fours and fives and climbing them with poise. Um, the ability to put your foot where you want it exactly the first time, maneuvering through moves logically. You know, when you match, you match your hands in such a way that... An intentional match. An intentional match where I'm not trapping my hand underneath the other hand and then I have to squirm my hand out and then go out to the next hold. Um, this poise is also a part of intensity. You know, you might call it flow, or you might call it a, like a natural climbing style. Flow. Flow is good, like yeah. Flow. Poise, flow, it's, but it's that je ne sais quoi. <laughs> that certain something. The C, <clears throat> the final letter of the original grading system before we added the O. Uh, complexity. How complex is the problem? How hard is the problem to read? How difficult is the beta, so to speak? And as I was just went down a little hole Grab in my head hole. there, <laughs> down a hole in my head there, I was just thinking as far as like, you know, if we're talking to people who are just setting, this is something that you'd like, you want to keep in the forefront of your mind and 
because in the forerunning process, like, and you're setting it, so you're setting it so you know the beta, and your forerunners are gonna forerun it, and so they're learning the beta, or you might give me like, oh, this is my intended beta, like, this is, I wanna see, you know what I mean? So your forerunners are kind of in on the secret, so Yeah, to they're speak. in the know. They're in the know, yeah. well said. So it's hard to be objectified. Objective. Objective, thank you. Oh, <laughs> not objectified. It's hard to be objective when you're, when you're in the know or when everybody's you're kind of in it and all that jazz. Does that make sense? So you might say like when you're setting and our forerunners are here helping us out or I'm forerunning Nick's problem, I kind of already know Nick's style. I know the yeah. holds that Nick selected already, uh, the wall that he's on. I probably even assigned you the problem to some degree. Most likely, So yes. by the time that I come to forerun it, I have a good idea of what's going on. So it's hard for us to be objective in the complexity realm because we already know the little interstices of the beta, the little itty bitty bits that the arete is on and that there's a foot chip over here and if I press my foot here and I grab that arete, I'll be just fine. Or you have to do, you know, a foot swap and then, you know, it's, yeah. and then it, the hole maybe doesn't look like an underclang, but it needs to be used as an underclang so you can get your bot, so you can go, then go to the next hold with your right hand, not your left hand, because if you go with your left hand, then you're making the problem harder, or you're not even, you know, you can't even set your, your barn door off. Like, that's the complexity. How easy is, how easy is the beta to be read? Is it a ladder? Like, you know, ones, twos, ones and twos, or zeros, ones and twos. Let's not forget about the zeros, very important. You know, the complexity on a zero, you don't want the complexity to be high. This is, this is a newer climber. They, you know, they're just looking to get to the top of the wall and have a good time doing it. So, you know, throw some cool moves in there, some, you know, some, you know, some crosses where they're, you know, they have to switch their center of gravity to going up the wall. You know, get them engaged, but, you know, don't make it too complex. And that complexity kind of ramps up slowly a little it ramps up in tandem with the other aspects of Rico with the risk and the intensity and the complexity and the originality which we'll get to next but those they're all playing a part and they all slowly ramping up and the complexity I think is probably the one that following the V grade scale goes up like that like it should go. I was just thinking that like you'd say for a V1 you'd have one bit of complexity like one you know <laughs> yeah that's Yes, keep going with Right, that. and then a V2, you could add two bits of complexity, and a V3, and your chin may be different, or your your perspective may be different, and that's totally fine. But yeah, by the time we get to V6, about every other move, if Damn, okay, so which we're... is good. We, we, we drove complexity into the ground, I think, and did a good job doing it. That's pretty so good, yeah. we, that being said, it's like, um, as far as the linear amount of like complexity versus the V scale, uh, you may find that you want more in your problems or even less depending on what your community is like. Or if you're setting at your own house, you can throw caution to the wind and it's like, what cool moves do you want to put? And then I'm going to put whatever grade I want on it and tell my friends that they, you know, that's what it is. It's a V1. Even though like, you rules. start on an underclang and you go out to a small little crimp or whatever. And that brings us to the O of Rico. Rico's rough next. Um, which is originality. We added this to our scale and augmented it basically based on the idea that on the indoors you can set so novelly, something so strange or outlandish that a climber may have not ever approached this move before. That doesn't necessarily make it outside of their scope of ability. You have control over everything. And you, yeah, we have control over basically everything in a gym. Um, unlike the outdoors where it's mother nature who's crafted this and designed it and it does and you'll see common patterns outside just like you do in a gym but in a gym because we can set so strangely and outlandishly what is the likelihood of a climber to have approached this move before in a different gym or outdoors or is the move that I've created so unique that it makes it hard to read or it is super complex or it has a lot of intensity but not for a standard climbing reason uh, the, the example I use in my head is you'll see the slab of the week where someone starts far side of the slab and they do a cartwheel across the wall. We've probably all seen this on Instagram one time or the next or 500,000 times before. Um, but that's a super original, unique, outlandish move that's not standard to like a climbing, to climbing scope as we know it traditionally. So that O to me is important for when 
a move is awesome and it's great, but it's not, maybe it's not even necessarily climbing, right? It's like, just like a start that I did on red. It's very parkour, like very, um, gym, how, not gymnastics, but it's, well, it's gymnastics. yeah, it's more gymnastical than it is dynamic. like strict climbing. It's dynamic. It's I not it's like, dynamic. yeah. So it's not necessarily like super strictly intense. It's not super strictly complex, but it is definitely original or strange. And so I thought that this it's was kind an of important. Kind a backwards dyno. It is, yeah. You go forward and then you have to push back which, out. Yeah, yeah, which is a, which I would say that makes it original. It's not your standard just jumping like laterally yeah. to, a, to another hole. That's a good point. Yeah, your force of direction or like your force of movement is going forward, but then you actually have to control back behind you, which is kind of cool. It takes a, definitely takes a, in the original, I wonder if you could use this as like a let, like how you probably with ties with originality and maybe complexity. Like how many times, like I mean, I know I could dyno. I don't like doing it. I prefer to go static. But like on the problem we were just talking about, like it took me four times, five times, just to hit the first dyno move to be able to, for my body to learn that those mechanics. Um, so like how like you know how complex is the or no, then, yeah how complex is the problem like how many times do you have to do it before you learn to do it and then it becomes easy and now you're then into the next part into the next part sure and that originality definitely comes to play into it and that's a great way how all these factors kind of like meld together right the originality also increases the risk um, just like that problem, the start hold is higher than you can reach from the ground. So for you to test what the start hold feels like, you actually have to try the problem and take an attempt on it just to test the first hold and see what it feels like. Because it's high up above your head, you have to step and jump into it. That the risk of that problem is high because you leave the ground and take your attempt before you even know what the start hold feels like. So you might take, like you said, five attempts to figure out the core mechanics, how to drive your hips into the wall, and what kind of grip you need to use on on the hole to actually succeed the first move. But then once you climb the whole problem, you realize that the first move is by far the easiest, right, of the whole problem, <laughs> it right? Really, it it's, really is. And it's really not even that hard. Of, it's probably, you know, it's like a V3 or four move, but it's so, you, it's so original and it's so risky that it fits right in with the scope of a six because it has these two factors and it makes a, it's a perfect starting move for a six because it's testing a, a, immediately do you have the determination to try again because chances are the first time you tried the move, you might have flopped and looked kind of like a jabroni. Is, is jabroni a derogatory or is that a nonsense word? Uh, I don't know. We say a lot in Pittsburgh. Okay. Well, hopefully uh, we'll, we'll look it up and we'll cut it out if it's bad. If it's bad. And if it isn't, and, and if it is bad, then I apologize. Uh, I learned it from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Um, it's a Pennsylvania thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> Pennsylvania slang insult J and jag, jag. And jag? Okay, well, if, if they said it in jag, then it can't be derogatory. <laughs> no, not the movie. Not, <laughs> the show, not the show jag. But a good reference. Uh, but on, in terms of John, the problem that we're talking about, the V6 that John said, I was just thinking, like, like you said, the first move is probably only as, it's like a three dyno. It's not that hard, but because of all the elements of Rico that go into that first part and then into the overhang part, like it gets, it hits V6 intensity wise when you're in the overhang, like right off the bat. But that move into it is not intense, but it is a six when it comes to complexity and originality. So like, and that is why, that's what I think makes it a really good problem because like you could have like a six that you know, maybe the first move isn't, you know, doesn't hit, it doesn't hit that six level in the other elements. So it's, you know, it's kind of like, eh. It's, just, it's not like it's a bad problem. It's not, you know, like it was, it's garbage or anything like that. It's serving its purpose, but that good, you know, that really good problem, that, that one that like everybody climbs, that you just, you know, they're like, there's that, to use the French term, je ne sais quoi that certain something like that I think when you when you're like oh that problem has that certain something and then you were to take that problem and then apply you know look at it from the, with the the Rico perspective you would see like oh that's because yeah it's not in a level of intensity at the first move is in a six but it's like really original which makes it then complex so you have to try it four or five times before you get it 
okay now and then it becomes easy because you know it's not that hard to do it's just super original and super complex and all right cool and now you're right into the v6 intensity level which you know you expected because you're like ah it's on the overhang that's gonna be hard and then you know personally i've never gotten on the other side but there's <laughs> just so many other things to climb he says it gets easier i don't think it gets easier <laughs> speaking of the overhang we'll be setting in the overhang soon so stick around for that video very exciting um probably like a v4 through the overhang uh, but that basically does it for Rico. Um, our final caveat is that there's many ways to grade or judge a problem. Chances are your gym does it differently, and that's totally cool. This is just kind of like food for thought as far as if you're new to setting, or maybe you experience setting and you have these same ideas but never put it into words. This is a really great acronym to be able to use. Um, the one thing we suggest when you are grading a problem, and I think that this is super important for a commercial gym, is that you're not grading your, especially if you're like a community leader in your gym, is that you're not grading your problems subjective to another person's climbing. And what I mean by that is, we have climber Steve. Steve sent it, and you might have heard this in the gym before, Steve sent it so it can't be a four, right? This sort of thing where you pigeonhole a climber to a certain grade or ability level as if they're not growing and learning and getting better, or even as a setter, you might say, ah, oh, well, I sent it, so it can't be a five, it can't be a six. I just don't climb those things. That is, if you sit back and think about it, it's wholly untrue, really. It's because if you said it and you said that, oh, I, I normally don't climb six that easily, well, you have a lot of factors in your benefit to that degree. Like, you already know the beta, you know all the holds up and down. You literally set the problem, so you've been working with this idea for probably 30, 30 minutes to an hour and 30, you've been pouring over this idea in your head. So you could probably close your eyes and look and see every hold on that problem. Whereas a climber who just came in, it's set day and they're excited to be here, well you put a V4 tag on that V6 because you thought it was really easy, but they, they don't come bolstered with this bandolier of beta that you have, this whole you know like map to the end of the problem that you've, you've pitched in your head. So what I would definitely suggest is if you don't have an objective way to grade problems, it doesn't have to be RICO, it, could be, it doesn't have to be an acronym, but you should come up with an objective way to grade your problems and not subjective to some climber's experience. Who knows, they might have a second bowl of Wheaties that day and they're just crushing it for whatever reason. Sometimes it happens. Yeah. So that being said, thanks so much for sticking around to the end of the video and uh, putting up with us just talking about climbing a little bit. We want to try this new format, so if you liked it, be sure to give us a like, a subscription, that really warms our heart. Everyone's kind comments in the comment section of both yeah. Facebook and, uh, and Reddit and the comments down below. Like, we, nice. we send screenshots of the, of the comments to each other and just like gush over how nice it is everyone's been. So, you know, continue to send the love and support and we'll continue to make these videos and we really hope it helped. And stick around next week when hopefully we'll have that V4 video out. So, bye. Bye.